are on the way to Bulls Gap, driving somewhere between North Carolina and Tennessee. Well, we're in Tennessee now, but we're in the mountains. Uh, we were supposed to race there on Tuesday. We had truck problems when we went to fire up Tuesday morning, so we took it to our friends at Tank Town in Charlotte. They got it fixed for us, and we're able to get everything put back up, drive our own truck. So me and Jenna are in route by ourselves. She's going to be my crew chief tonight until Dad gets there. But we're looking to get up to Bulls Gap to make some laps, some practice laps. Everybody else got a race on Tuesday, so we're going to have to play a little catch up. But I think we should be good this weekend. We shall see. Yep. Here we are. Bulls Gap, Volunteer Speedway. Looks like we're pulling in behind JD. Hopefully we'll be in front of him the rest of the weekend. Hopefully this is the last time we're behind them. It's pretty good here though. Good for two laps and then I can tell the tires gave up but uh feel pretty good some of the crews here now Justin Ford dad Terry JV so uh yeah, a lot we're here and never how long I know I didn't feel bad at all I drove in that driving to one I felt pretty good going in higher and then trying to yeah. turn down but I can tell the tires gave up after like two laps so. but yeah car felt pretty good considering we didn't I haven't been here in a couple of years too, so, or in this car at all. Rained out Friday night. We are here at the tower doing an interview with Scott Bloomquist. This ought to be exciting. We are back on the Scott Bloomquist social hour and it's about to get wild. We got Chris Ferguson and Jensen Ford joining Scott here. 
<laughs> Fergie, you wanna, don't do that. You want to talk about how much you don't like Cherokee? <laughs> I mean, I think the, the people that don't like Cherokee are the ones that just don't run good there. I mean, that's, that's yeah, the truth. But Cherokee's been way different many times. I mean, it's other than the day races all suck. Yeah. But it's had really good night races at times. Yeah. I mean, like the night you were there helping me. Yeah. When you won. That was the that best was tra- awesome. the track had ever been. And actually, Mark, uh, Mark's son Josh led a lot of that race. And uh, he was running the top, and then the top was a, the line for the first 40 laps, and then 10 to go, the bottom middle come in. And uh, just like that, Cherokee's all of a sudden a track that's got three grooves, and, and everyone... And then uh, it went away the next time, it was gone. It was gone, and it changed. It's never been again. Exactly. <laughs> how did you two come to be? How, how did that get started? Uh, Cody Mallory. I raced go-karts that, with Cody. Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah, yeah, I actually, I, I couldn't answer that. Yeah, I actually, you know, started when I got into racing. I, uh, I was always a fan of Scott's, uh, but then when we got into racing, one of the things that I always loved doing was, you know, when I lined up beside him, I wanted out, you know, when someone's the best, you want to outrun them. So, I usually be more aggressive than he should. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And there was times where I probably got into Scott and didn't even, you know, I wasn't even, it wasn't that I was intentionally, it was just you're driving so hard, you know, and, and I was in Rockets at the time, just kind of uh, wasn't running great. I'd ran good in the Longhorn stuff before, but I, I ran in Rockets, and they changed some stuff with the Halos, and uh, we didn't really know. And uh, this is, you know, a lot of people don't really know this story, but uh, Cody, me and Cody have been talking, and he was like, hey, like, come to Scott's after Bulls Gap. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, come get in you know come to scott's shop we need to talk about sit down and talk about it. you get one of these cars and i'm like it's, it's not even that's not an option you know I, and scott knows this and not a lot of people that watch the broadcast know this but I, I told cody i was like i can't i can't afford scott's cars you know and it's just me and my dad and, and some sponsors which came with me to scott's shop uh and he was like no just just sh- come here we'll talk about it and uh that's where it kind of first started which that's something that like when I was kind of coming into my own in the sport, I didn't know. I, d- I really didn't. Like when I was running um, Warriors a long time ago, and then same thing with uh, Longhorn the first go around, and then Rockets, and then Scott's cars. The one thing that I never really knew was at the end of the day, when you go to these big races, you start making them. Uh, you can't rely on no one else in that pit area you know you you think in your mind like as you're growing up watching this sport you're like oh you know that that shot guy he's at he's at this guy's trailer or this guy's trailer so i need to work with him that's not the case at the end of the day you know you, you gotta look your own you gotta shots. look in the mirror you have to learn you have to yeah you have to yeah. be able to not count on nobody and that's that's, was was one of the happiest times, you know, when you went down and won Magnolia. Oh, well, I, I didn't know if he was going to bring that up or not. <laughs> I mean, you know, Chris has never won a race that it wasn't hammered. No, I'm just saying, I just remembered the call from your dad. Yep. And it's and like. past Billy. And you drove by some good cars that are good drivers in the slick, and you not ever won a race in the slick. No, no. And it, it's just like, I was very happy for you. Well, don't forget, we are out here for the Spring Thaw 100 tomorrow night, a one-day-only show, $100,000 to win. We're looking forward to it. Tune in tomorrow night to the Spring Thaw 100. You'll be able to see Jensen and Fergie in action and Bloomquist behind the mic. I want to thank you, Jensen Ford. I want to thank you, Scott Bloomquist, the GOAT, and Chris Ferguson for coming on with us to the Scott Bloomquist Social Hour. Race day here at Bulls Gap. Uh, 100,000 to win on on the line tonight. A lot of really good cars here. Best in the country. I uh, can't believe we're racing for this kind of money this early in the year, but I'm excited. The fans have shown out. This place is packed out, so it's definitely got that big race vibe. I can, not really nervous, but just, uh, this is the kind of moments that I look forward to the most stepping up when the big money's on the line, on the line. So I don't know. We'll see. The track is wicked, as you can tell. This place is banked. I love this place, though. It's uh, it's fast. It does slick off and slow down and race all over, but uh, just need to get out there and then uh, contend for a hundred grand tonight.
Jeez, we're all trapped. Well, we got a couple more. There you are on track. I, I took these. All right, so who are you? I'm Chris's girlfriend. I'm Jenna Gentry. I also own Sweet Victory Apparel Company. Uh, how does Sweet Victory, I know it's sponsored a lot of race tracks, a lot of race cars, events. How did you start that? Um, I started it about three years ago. I had a boutique before I started Sweet Victory and my whole family has been into racing all my life and so I wanted to do something that was still in the apparel industry but had more to do with racing and so I wanted a clean racing brand that you could wear to the track or away from the track and so I started Sweet Victory. Alright, so being that you get to get all the tracks, what's your favorite track you can see? Um, probably either Eldora or Fairbury. I like Fairbury as far as like a small town track. Um, it's really cool. You can ride your golf cart up to the grocery store. Everybody's super friendly. But as far as like a bigger track, Eldora is probably my favorite. You can't go wrong going to the World of the Dream or especially the Million. That was probably the most fun race as far as that Eldora. And last but not least, how did you and Chris meet? Um, we met. So actually, he like came and got some Sweet Victory stuff and then he bought custom stuff from us because we do a lot of custom stuff for drivers. So he got some beanies from me and then he, I was going to give him to him at the track and he was like, no, I want to come pick him up right now and he came pick me up and then we went to Millbridge just as friends and then the rest is history. Well, love starts at Millbridge. Yeah. So we're here in the hauler now, getting tires ready. Um, Terry's been over here working. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have a, um, a cool view tonight. We're gonna put the GoPro on the helmet. Hopefully do it for the main event, uh, as long as everything goes good. And uh, see a little different perspective. I put it on for the test uh, two nights ago and it worked out really good, so. We'll see how it goes in the 100 lapper and uh, as long as we make it in through the heat races and everything goes good tonight. I just bought that thing. Show the team. Beautiful. Classic. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Get the man like that.
this outside pole of the fourth heat race. So um, we win it. We sold an outside pole for 100 grand. So Dale's been tough here. Dale McDowell's one of the best there is, and one of the best there is at Volunteer Speedway. So uh, going to get to see how good we are right off the bat. But I really uh, had a good first lap, and in the second lap, I went for it, pushed a little bit, and one and two, and I really think that lap would have been even better, but um, that's just how it goes sometimes, and we still got a good enough lap to be fourth in our group, so we're there in contention to win this hundred grand, and um, just gonna have to make some right moves in the heat race to get it done. to the Forward Bike Podcast. We had Chris Ferguson on there a couple of weeks ago. He had a lot to talk about, and we're going to hopefully have him on again soon. So everybody check that out on the Speed Sport Podcast Network and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Check us out. Operator Bobby Pierce hanging up into the number three spot. One lap scored in the books. Your race leader, the Mac Daddy Dale McDowell. Yeah, he's looking good, real good. Oh, trouble down the back straight away. Oh. Back between two. 
Chris Ferguson, Chris Madden get together. Madden hard into the inside retaining wall. The caution is out. We're going to stop cars on the speedway. Chris Madden into the inside retaining wall. Hard, hard, hard. A little bit of bumping and banging there yeah. with Chris Ferguson as we got down the back straightaway. here this for the fourth position Bobby Pierce owns it Chris Ferguson would like it. down the back shoot they go with a car length separate good stuff here turbo still working the top side of the speedway beat pound and destroy that is the motto for the 1T team here tonight for the best performance motorsports rocket entry Ferguson's working on Bobby Pierce here you know he's uh, Bobby must have something going on because he seems to be fading Fergie there with a good run down the back straightaway. Had to set it down hard to keep out of the back bumper of the 32. As you see, Bobby Pierce's left front wheel really decelerating. He's on the binders hard, trying to make his way down through the bottom side there and get off the exit of the turn. Here comes Fergie, going to take a canter to the inside. Now into one and two. Fergie going to roll the top yeah, side of the speedway. He's railing that top, yeah. Get a good run off the corner. Look at that. He's nice him up underneath. How about that? Like a surge in this man. Chris Ferguson, Mount Holly, North Carolina, going to sneak that fourth position. Bobby. the top five for the majority of the race and then that last restart just uh zigged when i should have zagged and uh lost a couple spots just by trying to run the line i was running before the caution and, and when i did that 
a couple guys tried to fill the gap and I couldn't cross them and then I almost hit the fence and one and two so just uh trying to make it happen there under 10 to go if you're in the top five or under 20 to go you got you got to try something and just uh cost myself a, a pretty good finish but uh just part of it you know started eighth and um got up there into fourth and fifth and and before that caution come out i could see me and bronson were both catching um hudson o'neill and marler but uh just you know should have probably qualified a little better and started a little better maybe had a shot tonight but congrats to Dale mcdowell on the win and uh, uh we'll be back next week